recording. This is going to suck a lot. Uh, I love technology. I love technology. I love technology. How many times do you have to say it before yeah. it's true? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Penzik, guys. We are here. I'm setting up my medieval encampment, and many of you have asked. Yes, this is how I dress to set up. Um, I can wash the hell out of this dress and this shirt. They're both linen. They'll be fine. Um, so I'm, you're actually going to get to see me set up the interior of my pavilion. Sorry, I actually set up the pavilion yesterday when I was super exhausted and jet lagged and I just couldn't even find the energy to think about live streaming or filming or anything. So sorry, you don't get to see how the Pavolino style pavilion goes up, but you will get to see how I transform this space into a 15th century a glamorous paradise a la Contessa. So I'm going to be over here setting up a rope bed. It probably means I'm only going to get over occasionally to be able to check the chat and answer questions. So I apologize. This is going to be a less interactive live than maybe you're used to. But you're going to get to see me do all kinds of crazy things to set this pavilion up. The first thing we're going to do is set up our rope bed. So these ropes, these are, these are hemp ropes. So about as authentic as you can get without actually making your own rope. And so the first thing we do is we unwind the rope. And I've actually had, I have had this, um, <laughs> this bed was made for me by friends uh, about 13, 13 years ago. Yeah, that's a good question. To make it into, a into one long rope. So we unwind it to make it into one long rope. Yes, but <clears throat> do you want it to sit on the, in a pile on the floor? No, extend it out. Okay. You don't want it in a pile. So that you want that it, was my thought. You want it extended out because <clears throat> you want to, we're going to be actually threading boards together using this rope. That is, in fact, what keeps a rope bed together are the ropes. Nothing else but the ropes. You don't need any kind of wedges or pegs or anything like that to hold a rope bed together. <coughs> And the nice thing about a rope bed is that it's adjustable and you can make them as hard as you like or as hammock-like as you prefer. We are going to be doing a bit of cheating today, so expect to see some techniques for cheating on putting together your rope bed. What I'm about to show you, the technique for assembling it, is most assuredly not a medieval method for tightening it. Uh, the reality is that, with the exception of setting up beds in encampments, which we know people who went, mostly men who went on campaign, they certainly, the, the, the powerful princes, so to say, and lords, certainly set up beds in their pavilions. And we know this, for example, the Duke of Burgundy, Charles the Bold, had an extremely luxurious camp at the time of his precipitous, hasty, and unplanned demise at the Battle of Nancy in 1477. Because when the Swiss mercenaries, soon to become the Lansconnect, uh, many of them soon to become Lansconnect, as it were, sacked his encampment, they came away with tens of millions of dollars in modern money worth of goods furniture, uh, tapestries, carpets, wool and silk, um, jewels, clothing, fabric. He apparently just had chests full of fabric with him, interestingly. I like, I like chests full of fabric. Um, and a lot of that fabric was turned into altar cloths for Swiss churches that are still in those Swiss church treasuries to this day. And one, about 12, 13 years ago, there was an, an exhibition that consolidated all, it's called the Burgundische Beute in German, the Burgundian spoils of war, the Burgundian booty. <laughs> and it kind of t collected a lot of it up into a single traveling collection. And it was amazing to see the things that Charles the Bold had brought with him on his campaign. I mean, wow, talk about hashtag life goals. Could you uh, take that end and string yep. it? For you? Now, I just kind of zigzag mine, the other one out there, is that Yeah, the yeah, it just needs to be on a straight line. And if I had, dear viewer, if I had actually done this properly, um, then we would, <laughs> just, there wouldn't be a big knot. But I am so, so jet lagged from having traveled from Korea all the way to Pennsylvania, just 
two days ago and not sleeping. I've been getting about three to four hours of sleep a night for the last four nights. So you might get some babble coming out of my mouth and I'm going to apologize for that now. I might start on a tangent and just keep going. And I will apologize for that, but some of you enjoy that. I might go off on my crazy tangents. Anyway, there would have been a better way to do this than what the big knot I created in unwinding it. Nope. Yeah, keep pulling. <clears throat> so, hold on a minute. Technology is my friend. Yeah, so I'm also trying to record this to turn to turn this into my memory card and my other camera is just not a happy camper at all, which is great. Technology for everyone, everyone. Because I'm trying to turn this into a perhaps useful video that other people will be able to follow more succinctly later on. Okay, so next we're going to unbundle the bed stays. And as um, some of you were curious about the way I pack things together, so this is one of the ways this, that we pack. I pack the bed ends, the, these are the legs of the bed, all together in a nice stack, and then we use bungee straps to bind them together, to keep them together on the journey. And no, I did not bring this in my luggage. This is stored here in my Lord Papa's demands, so that it is available for me specifically when I come to this event. So first time thing I'm going to do is decide I'm on a slope. We have some topography here. So the first thing I have to do is decide where I want my bed. And um, I definitely want my head up because I don't enjoy the mucus draining into my sinus cavities at night. And um, I don't enjoy the blood going to my head either. So I'm going to put the head this way. And in this bed, it has a slight, a slight headboard, so to say. So these taller uprights are the head of the bed. So I'll just go ahead and place those. Here, like so, and I will place the legs here, like so. And this pavilion is um, definitely a, <laughs> a personal sized pavilion, like a personal sized pizza, which means that it is actually not quite big enough for this bed. The uprights actually kind of poke, poke against the walls on the outside a little bit, and that's fine. It's never been a problem. Um, I have a bigger pavilion that's in storage. That one has a uh, 16 or 17 foot footprint. I think I tend to think 17 feet foot footprint. This one only has a 12 foot footprint. So it's much more compact. And in fact, I can, I can, if I want, set this pavilion up entirely on my own. It's easier with two people, but I can do it on my own. Whereas my full size pavilion, I cannot do on my own. That canvas is way too heavy. Okay, so these are the long side boards, and then we have then we have the ends, the short ends. And one of these is a headboard, actually, headboard to keep the pillows on. And this is, this is very functional. It is certainly not a decorative bed by any stretch, but it's very nice as it allows me to sleep elevated off of the floor in luxury in a nice mattress. We'll talk about my mattresses in a little bit. And then I can store things underneath. Oh, my poor camera is just losing its mind. It is not happy at all. Um, okay, so now we are going to be starting the um, the stringing process. So remember, I mentioned that sheet. The sheet is coming in the form of a ratchet strap, and you'll see that in a bit. The first thing we're going to do is set up the uprights. And unfortunately, I only now these days I only set up a rope bed once a year. I used to set up a rope bed like five times a year. I only set it up once a year. So every year I have to kind of reinvent the wheel in the sense of I have to remember 
exactly how this bed goes together. And I'm pretty certain that in the case of these legs, the carved part goes out so that it can all slot together. Um, and unfortunately, I tried to set this up horizontal so you would all have a much bigger, broader view, but YouTube and my phone didn't want to play together. So vertical it is. I'm going to try to fight to figure out how to force YouTube Live on my phone to actually be horizontal in the way it should be or maximum visibility. Until that time, I'm sorry guys, you're just gonna have to deal with this situation and I apologize. Ah, today's video is brought to you by Armor and Castings. They are one of the Creative Contessa's sponsors and they will be here at Penzik and we will be checking out their booth live at some point and doing some shopping. Um, and I really do encourage you to patronize them. They have a really beautiful, very reasonably priced replica items from ancient to early modern, early modern being like 16th, 17th century. Okay, sponsorship uh, spout over, back to assembling this rope bed. Okay, so when you're assembling a rope bed, basically you kind of want to get it all set up um, before you start doing the ropes. Um, and also, this bed has lived in a, has lived, my camera is absolutely, my actual camera is losing its mind. It is not even a little bit happy. The memory card keeps failing, which is not a good sign. Um, anyway, uh, so this, we might encounter some humidity issues, by which I mean the wood may have swelled from being humifi humidified because it is not stored in a climate controlled environment. On the other hand, it might have dried out in the heat of the summer. Haha, <laughs> anything. Nothing dries out in Delaware. That is not how it works. <laughs> so, but we'll see. We will see what happens. So, wait, already making a mistake. <clears throat> We don't assemble it this way first. That's why this one's a little bit tricky. Remember I said I'm reinventing the wheel? How do they get the mallet? Would awesome. that be helpful? Yours is metal, right? Yeah. I have a rubber one too. Yeah, we might want to have the rubber mallet on hand. Oh, that's right, they were mocking your rubber mallet. They, they were, but now that they don't, they will have to not mock it because it's useful. Yeah, no, rubber mallets are super useful. They should not mock them. Okay, now, we take the end and put the end in like this. Keep the rubber mallet on hand. Thankfully, yep. I ended up not needing it, which is great. I'm just gonna put this down for now, and then we're gonna do the same to the back ends. So we set up that end, and then we set up this end, and I lay it on its side, and again I'm putting the carved out part pointing outward, it's kind of a seat for the, uh, the sideboards. Okay, now the back, the headboard, no, the headboard is a little tricky because you have to do both, or the, yeah, the headboard, the head, the head area. God's blood. Well, there goes my dream of turning this into a proper video for a second. Um, okay, so um, it becomes a little tricky um, because you have to put both the headboard and the sideboard in at the same time, or the end board in at the same time. And you just, you just have to do that because you can't just slip one in later on. Again, make certain that you are actually putting putting the carved part of the upright out. This is where we're down on the side. This is where we're probably going to end up using your rubber mallet. I'm worried if I hammer this on with the mallet that it might not come off again. <laughs> then you just mallet it off again. Maybe. Okay. Let's see if this one might go better the other way. 
sometimes one end is better fitted, is looser than the other. For the prognostications, um, do we have a tarp? Um, You've got a tarp down here. Uh, yeah, my bedding is about to get soaked. So it was sunny until a few minutes ago, and there was not supposed to be rain at all. And of course, it's now raining, so that's my life. Okay. If this fits better in the other board. And the other one doesn't fit. I swear to God, I've set this up, this bed up almost every year since 2010. So it does work. It's just not working right now. Oh, because one of the boards may have warped from being in storage. That's what it's fun. Okay, well, I mean, this is the it is. The, the lights of wood are that it also changes from year to year, depending yeah. on how it's done. Especially because this is, like I said, place. Okay, there we go. Actually, that worked. Yes. Okay, we're good. No rubber mallet needed. More brutal force, but no rubber mallet. Yay. Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to check the chat and see if anyone has had any questions. I don't see anything. Nope. Nope, there doesn't seem to be. Oh, <laughs> Denzel, yo. Hello, Denzel, if you're still watching. Okay, I will occasionally check the live chat, but otherwise I'm going to be focused on making myself angry by setting up this bed. <laughs> okay, so now we have the headboard together, we have the footboard together, now we're going to set it up and we're going to attach the two sideboards. So first, we set up this part, and sometimes, actually I have someone here, normally I, normally I set this up by myself, so this is exciting <laughs> to have another human to help do this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then we put on a sideboard. You're gonna have to move that yes. out. Yes. Yeah, hold on. Stay. Oh, we're on a slope. Okay. Stay. Stay. Yes. Okay. possibly. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know, it looks like it has swollen. Ah, there we yep. go. More That's force. Wonderful. Maximum force. Okay. okay. I'm just going to rotate. Okay. Okay, so then, last board is on. Okay. Here we go. It's a bed. Yeah. 
have a frame. You now have, you have an air mattress. It's air. Oh, literally. <laughs> Yeah. You literally have I mean, a useless a useless mattress of nothing. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> try this one more time. Okay, so now we are going to uh we're going to first we're gonna put the ropes and then we're gonna ratchet. Oh, okay. Yep. First we put on the ropes and then we ratchet strap. Okay, actually I think I'm going to uh, dear viewer, I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab a piece of technology that will allow me to, the sound to hopefully improve. Ah, okay, so we got a comment. Hi, I didn't go to Penzik this year, but feeling it through people, friends, and what I can do watching you <laughs> putting your bed up. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I'm going to go grab a little attachment and then I'll be able to actually mic directly into the camera, which will possibly improve the sound quality since I have no idea how the sound quality is for you guys out there in viewer land like literally I can't tell so I think because my this is camera is not really is there anything you're going to start with while you're grabbing that um yeah so basically um I should check to see which is the longer of the two ropes I think they're the same size actually okay so we have our ropes and see we have the holes in the bed at least I hope you can see the holes in the in the sides of the bed and we're basically going to be lacing the ropes back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth in one direction and then back and forth back and forth back and forth in the other direction weaving over and under over and under over and under through the first set and so the first thing we actually do is set up our end could you go check that end and see if it has a loop a little loop one of them did I forget which one no this one does not okay that that's fine. It's, it's, oh no. Um, no, that's just a, that's just yeah. a braided end. Okay, good. Just yeah, wanted to make sure if, if there was already a loop, then I wasn't going to then I was going to use that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually tie uh, tie this around one end through one hole and around one end, and I'm going to make a little uh, slip knot around that so that it goes flush against it. So, so I'll start that up here. And I want to do this uh, ideally so that the knots kind of all get hidden by my mattress. So that there's nothing sticking out to sort of make it <clears throat> tie a half knot anyway. You only need to tie a half knot because we're going to put so much pressure on this that it will literally bind itself. And honestly, if we, we might be uh, taking a pause to go and ask our neighbors if they have work gloves. Because I forgot about work gloves. Like I said, I only do this, you know, once a year. Okay, so. It's not the right way to do that. Because with this kind of rope, with hemp rope, you really do want, you want work gloves. If you don't have work gloves, your hands will regret it. Okay. So now I've got to find the other end of the rope and start. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about that, actually. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Nice yeah. One. Yeah. I can do a neat coil in there. Yeah. I, I can lace while you're fetching the gadgets. Yeah. So what's going to happen is, mm -hmm. when we find the end, it's there. Lacing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Out. Come Out. around. Over, and come back yeah. in. Sounds yep. Add the microphone. So the, for those of you who are joining us, I will occasionally. 
um, to hopefully. Did that improve the sound, guys? Can you actually hear me better now? I actually attached the microphone and the uh, one of my other lapel mics uh, with the attachment for the phone, so I'm hoping that will make the sound quality better for you to be able to hear me better at any rate. So if you're listening and the sound quality actually improved just now, please let me know. Or if you can't hear me, also let me know. Uh, for those who are just joining, uh, please feel f no, 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 no. Okay, good lesson learned. Undo, 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 undo everything. Undo everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Okay, so uh, this is very important. When you're lacing a bed. Aren't you glad to have a novice apprentice with you? Yeah. Who doesn't know what she's doing and you can teach yeah. things? Yeah, okay, watch this. Okay, so we yep. have it. You develop a technique for quick ropes. And I believe this is, I, I've seen sailors do this too. Oh, cool. Uh, I see, this is the right direction to unlace it, right? Yes, mm -hmm. good, okay. Okay, so, you want to, uh, hold on, let me, again, wish we could get horizontal on my phone, but we can't, because YouTube and my phone don't get along, apparently. So, you come in, Oh, duh. Otherwise your mattress will not sit properly. Wow. <clears throat> Come in, because you want this There you go. I don't particularly want rope burn. No, rope burn is pretty wretched. And hemp is great because it's natural, but also it will trash your hands and your skin. Wait, 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 where'd the end go? You don't want to stop. No, no, you want to put it in first before you start pulling the rope through. You end up with a knot. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So you always want to put it through before you start and pull pull the rope out to the other side first. Otherwise you end up with big knot. Nope. Okay, hold on. Yep. Okay, go ahead and lace yeah, lace it yep. through. Okay, here you go. <clears throat> and what's nice about this rope bed, one of the many things, um, is that there's no plastic. <laughs> so, no petrochemicals. And that means that I actually have a nice wood smell in my tent from this heating up, sort of, during the Right. Not be in the bed anymore. Nope. No, the next part is a little more backbreaking because we will have to unfortunately crouch over the bed. There will be no choice about that. Okay. And the closer you put your holes, if you make a rope bed, the closer you put your holes, the more comfortable it will be for you. Okay, so. Um, just, just do a little half knot for now. Um, okay. Just yeah, just over around it, just, just to keep it in place. So we're now going to do some ratchet strapping. <laughs> Here is uh, the Contessa's trick for making a really tight rope bed without ripping your hands apart. So we're actually going to take this ratchet strap and we're going to wrap it around these long boards and um, thereby uh, ratchet it together and then tighten the ropes and then release the ratchets and the boards will spring out and make the rope super tight, which is what I like. I
baggy bed. I do not like hammock bed. It hurts my back. So. Someone ran this, had this, we borrowed this from someone and they already had it. Okay. We have two straps, that's even better. One, and that's fine. This. So you attach your, hook your two ends together. And then, pathetically. I might have needed to have tightened it more. It might get too much in there, actually. Ratchet, ratchet, ratchet. Now, obviously, what you don't want to do is break your bed. So, know, know how much your bed can flex. But look, you'll notice, if we look now at the ropes, there's so much sag there where there wasn't before. So, now, we do the tightening process. So, probably, um, from that angle, it will be better to maybe angle it this way. Like, diagonally, I think, maybe? I don't know. We're figuring out this camera angle thing because again, YouTube won't let me do the horizontal view, which would actually allow you to see everything happening easily. <laughs> Why would we do that? Why would we do something so practical? Because apparently YouTube thinks you should only do makeup tutorials, I guess. Okay, so uh, now we get on our feet. And you can actually use your legs to help tighten. Wait, hold on. There's still some slack here that needs to get pulled through. So just, yeah, there we go. Okay. Wait, 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 don't, don't pull yet. <laughs> okay, now this one. You can see already just how much extra rope we suddenly have. Let go, let go, yep. Let go. And yes, this bed creaks a lot. There is no way to be silent in this bed. It's part of its charm. Consider it like, I don't know, some kind of hypnotic something or other for helping you sleep. Like white noise, but annoying. Okay, and then I What's not around? It's not through the hole. Oh no, I know that, okay. but we have to yeah. yeah. That's part of the tying off process. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm tracking that. You're like, which step is next? Okay, so we tie this off. Look at that. Nice. And once we ratchet strap, these sideboards are gonna spring out and they'll really tighten this. So that'll be quite nice for sleeping. Now my mattresses for this, I do a very 15th century combination of straw mattress on the base, then a feather topper on top of that, which is attested to in Lorenzo de' Medici's uh, 14, the 1492 inventory of Lorenzo de' Medici's palazzo, because he was a hoarder. Sound went bye bye, okay, it's back. Sound in again, again, and then back. That's fun, nice, ah, that's great. I love technology, it makes my life so happy. Um, okay, so, um, going to go ahead and release now. Let me see, where's the little release button? Oh, this is, uh, this is super rusty. <laughs> Oof. Or not, or the ratchet strap will just be there for the entire event until I cut it off. Oof. Oof, 
I might have been overzealous in my ratcheting. <laughs> okay, um... Can you unhook the hooks, do you think? Maybe, yeah, okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Of course, we still have to figure out how to get this ratchet strap undone so that we can use it. Uh, maybe I'll have you run and go ask our neighbors if they can get it undone, since clearly I'm... I'm sure some of those brawny Norsemen can do it. I mean, they're theirs. It's their ratchet strap, so... Okay. They should, they should know how to do it. And I'll start with the, I'll start lacing in the other direction now. Okay. Uh, was so. it the Norseman or was it the next uh, door? Right here, our next door neighbors. Okay. Immediate next door neighbors, Joe, in fact. Okay, so now we will start with the other side. So now we're gonna be going, when we lace, we're gonna be going over and under, over and under, over and under, over and under. Yep. <clears throat> And I don't know if the microphone is actually not helping with the sound, then maybe I'll get rid of it. I don't know why. <sighs> why technology hates me. Honestly, I'm not a medievalist because I like using modern tech. So there's that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, by the by, everyone, some of you may know this and some of you may not. Uh, canvas, tent canvas is not 100% UV resistant. You will get sunburned under canvas if you don't also sunblock. Um, and I will show you setting up my silk bed canopy exactly the visible proof of uh, canvas not being UV tight. Because the color difference between the canopy of my silk bed hangings and the walls of my silk bed hangings, which are made at exactly the same time from exactly the same bolt of silk. And one is orange and the other are still red. So. If you are sitting under a canvas um, tarp or a canvas pavilion or a canvas canopy sunblock, <laughs> cover your bare skin or you will take sun damage. Okay, so now we start the over and under process. Okay. Under, so I'm going under, over, under, over. Let me just go back and forth. One fixed ratchet strap. Yay! It really requires two people to unwrap it. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad to know it wasn't just failure on my part. No, it was not. Now, when you're doing over and under, you have to kind of pay attention because you can get lost and do the wrong thing, and then you end up with two sets of, you know, parallel ropes instead of alternating ropes and this is what sort of helps create the you just pull that yep through. yep this is what helps create the, the right? yeah i mean it was last year who knows this year okay the over and under is what helps create the strength of you're literally weaving together your bed in just a very loose weave <laughs> but it's still weaving it should have enough slack to pull yep Da, ba, da. So just, you know, you might fall into this kind of zen place. I grabbed the little, side. little, so keep your hands close together and just pull, 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 pull. There you go. Okay. And you can go between the ropes until you actually, <laughs> you know, have no room left. So this is a little bit of a workout. <laughs> Make sure to engage your core. Don't bend over at your waist, bend over at your hips and keep your core engaged if you're doing this so you're not putting strain on your back. So it actually is more efficient if the other person you do the over under over oh. under to the midway point oh. 
plenty on this side. Go ahead and pull. Okay, then I'll start so you can carry on while I pull the rest of the slack. Okay, pick her up. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can just really become a well-oiled machine. In many ways, this sort of reminds me of uh, working on a sailboat. <laughs> the sort of pairing you have to go. Okay, go ahead and start weaving it. Remember, keep your core engaged. Bend at your hips, not at your waist. I'm trying. No, no, I'm reminding my viewer if they're actually, you know, if anyone happens to be stringing a rope bed. I'm sorry, that was probably really loud because the microphone might actually be working. If you happen to be stringing a rope bed, then remember, keep your core engaged. Also squat if you can, if you have room to, rather than, you know, crouch. Do that hunter's crouch thing. Use the bed too, which is nice. Yeah. I'm not certain where to aim this thing. I'm gonna move it back a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Dear YouTube, please let me put my phone in the horizontal position <laughs> so that the viewer actually can see everything that's happening instead of a tiny little piece of it. Sincere, nope, nope, something happened somewhere. Something may have happened here then. We might have to undo it. Let's see, that's correct, 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 that's correct. That's correct. Where is it doubled? Hmm, wait, hold on. Well, that one's yeah, under. Yes, but that that will be under twice. No, wait. No. Yes. Over. But this is over. So this should be under, but this one is also under. So where did it go? Around? Yes, exactly. So yeah, we found a spot where it was d double under, so we had to, only had to restart. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's good to pay attention. It's possibly fatal, but it is part of the strengthening of the system to have the interlocking, the interlocking ropes. So it isn't fatal. Fatal would be very melodramatic and not true. But, you know, you really do want the over-under as much as you can make that happen. It's better. Now some people, and I think I tried this one year, I tried only unlacing one side and leaving the rest laced, but it made a bunch of big knots <laughs> in the ropes, the storage and the packing. And um, it was not feasible because, and then I think that was a different kind of rope bed. And I think with this one, it's not feasible because then you can't take the sides off because the sides are roped in literally. Someone else had a different design of rope bed, so they were able to get away with that, but not with this design. So yeah, it sure would be nice not to have to rethread this every time. The, and if I think if the bed were designed differently, you could design it to do that so that you didn't have to completely unthread and completely rethread in order to pack the bed up. But with this design, this is what one must do. This was a gift to me, so, you know. <laughs> A very, a very dear friend, I would almost say, part of my chosen family made this for me. 
Tunis actually made this. You know Tunis. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tunis made this for me. He is. <clears throat> actually. Well, the so-called rain was just drops. The yeah, thankfully. <laughs> Not a downpour to make my feather bed very, very moist indeed. Okay. Ta -da. Last one. Hey. So now we're going to do the same thing in the other direction. We're going to do the ratchet strap trick. And so it should be seven and a half to nicely ratchet. Oh, uh, good. Excellent. Okay. Take it over to your end. Yeah, the problem was that it got the way the, the headboard. It got twisted. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it wasn't. Nope, this one's not long enough to actually ratchet the side of the bed. Okay, that's Wait, fine. So pause. I have straps in my car that we could put into the middle of this to help ratchet and then use that to ratchet it down. You, you have more ratchet straps? It's not a ratchet strap, it's a regular strap. But we oh. can still hook it to make a centerpiece. So it has hooks on it? Yep. Okay, yep, that'll and work. we can lengthen it and shorten it that as will work. so it fills in the gap. That will work. I don't remember if my car is working. Seriously, what is, what is going on? Okay, so we're going to go and get some more straps, another strap with hooks. Okay, uh, so while we're fetching the other strap, are there any questions? Like a Celtic knot, cool. Oh, yes, with the bet, yeah. So was the, is, is the sound, I'm going to get rid of the microphone. I, I don't know why it's not working, but it seems to not be working, so. To the camera's mic it is. Gotta love technology. You know, to imagine there are people who have, like, normally this kind of, you know, videos are made with product, films are made with production teams who actually, you know, you have people who specialize in each area, whereas as a creator, I have to be a jack of all trades. Trades in which I have no interest, actually, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but there it is. Technology fell on the microphone. That's fun. Who knows why? That's exciting. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so um, this might not actually be a medieval model of rope bed. This might be a post medieval model of rope bed. We're actually, uh, I have to do a little more research on that. There, are, there were rope beds. I'm not saying there weren't. Um, but this might actually be a later model of rope bed. Um, there were also slat beds. Lots of slat beds. The disadvantage of a slat bed, though, is that you have lots of boards for a slat bed. And this is this breaks down into a flat stack of wood that isn't very big and some ropes, whereas a slat bed takes up a lot of room and weighs a lot and has a lot of uh, fuel consumption involved in the transport thereof. And you need more room in your carts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I really do prefer the rope bed for that reason. Yeah. <clears throat> Feed the ratchet, and then put the baby down, and then we will tighten these ropes, and then, like magic, we'll have a rope bed. But there is still uh, a very important step, and I need to go and actually procure straw to stuff my mattress. <laughs> uh, that is the also the advantage of a straw mattress instead of a you know a air mattress, which deflate and are terrible, terribly uncomfortable to me anyway. Um, so the disadvantage of uh, 
air mattresses, it deflates or it compresses. Yes. Okay. I, or, or, I, I mean, I heard the right sound. Oh, it's wait, no. Not oh, no, you have to you have to feed it the other way. Yeah. So, feed it up this way. I only use ratchet straps like literally once a year. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can hear that telltale creaking. Creak, creak, creak. Okay. Good enough. And now, apologize for any queasiness that may be occurring from the motion. Now we go through the same tightening process. So I'll start at this end. Okay. Uh, pull from your pull from that one. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yep. Pull. Yep. Pull more. Pull more. Yep. Okay. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Okay. Pull. already see all the slack that we're pulling out of this thing. <clears throat> uh, pull this more on the other side. Yeah, there you go. You actually do most, you want to do most of your pulling on the other side of the board, not in the, not um, in the back. I was worried about my fingers getting caught. Oh, no, so you wait, you wait. So what I do is I say, go ahead and pull. And oh, okay. I, I won't pull until you tell me pull. Okay. <laughs> Your fingers will therefore not get caught. Okay, go. Okay. And in that process, we got another couple of feet out of the rope. Not that we had tightened it all really during the initial lacing. So now we just tie it off. And there we have a rope bed. So I haven't, unfortunately, I should have, I should have bought the straw mattress taking the straw, the bale of straw before starting this live stream, because unfortunately that means that you're not going to get to see me, at least in this live stream, stuff the mall, this, this straw mattress and put it on the bed. So I might call this just setting up the rope bed and maybe I'll do a live stream a little bit later for the other parts of the process, the setting up of the furniture, hanging of the canopy. I might do the canopy now. I can hang the canopy now. Although it is easier to put the canopy up or to put the mattress on before the canopy goes up. So maybe, maybe this will be just setting up the rope bed. <laughs> I mean, pieces are always nice. Yeah. Easier to we can also find. do, we can also go ahead and set up the table that we can do. Mm -hmm. Set up the table. Okay. So yeah, the next process, the next part of the bed will be stuffing the ticking my linen ticking, my linen canvas ticking, which I bought last year at Pensick, with the straw, and then putting that on the rope and arranging it appropriately, and then the straw, the, the feather feather bed will go on top of that, and then sheets, and then uh, a wool blanket, and then my embroidered bedspread, and then the canopy will be hung from the spokes in various ways, because unfortunately my canopy is also designed for a bigger tent, so it requires some futzing to actually get it to hang in this much smaller space. And some, um, what my theater friends would call zhuzhing, <laughs> I believe. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and run that on itself to get it, to keep it out of the ground. Okay, well, there is the rope bed. So, there is the rope bed. Um, and you can see it's pretty, uh, Ooh, pretty tight. Yep. And like I, I said, I definitely need to try this. Also. It definitely 
definitely makes noise. So that is an unfortunate aspect of the rope bed. Um, yeah, so the, the slat beds are actually, the most evidence I have for slat beds is actually first millennium, and they tend to be in Scandinavia. Um, so I don't, I haven't seen evidence of a slat bed south of Scandinavia. Like, and, and the in, like the Norse sphere of influence, so Denmark, um, Anglo-Saxon England, Norse Ireland, that sort of thing. And all first millennium, I doesn't mean they didn't exist, I just haven't personally seen the evidence of slat beds post first millennium. <laughs> Um, and in sort of mainland southern Europe. Um, and actually, I don't know, it may make sense if you're living in southern Europe especially that you want a rope bed <laughs> because you want the air to circulate um, in the summer especially and it would make sense that maybe if you're in northern Europe you want a slat bed because you want the air to not steal away the heat from your body. So you want to create more of a box effect. Maybe. I'm, I'm just theorizing here guys, I've got no evidence to back any of that up. Pure hypothesis. Um, so yeah, so for if you've got a Scandinavian persona, probably a slat bed is much more appropriate for you, which unfortunately means more storage space in a car, more gas spent to and from events, more heavy lifting, but the setup of a slat bed is super easy and it's way easier than this. So, you know, you got to take the pluses with the minuses, I suppose. Um, so next thing we're going to do is set up my table. So I'm just going to carry you around. I apologize, dear viewer. I'm sorry for making you sick. Crazy if the motion, if the motion does not do you well. Just got to figure out where to put you now. Okay. So I'm going to be putting my table over in this corner. And this is a trestle table, um, or it's a call it's a, not really trestle because I guess these kind of count as trestles, sort of. Um, but it definitely, it's a, it's a completely takedown table. So these are the legs and, uh, right, two of them. And then we have the, the struts, cross beams. And we have three of them. We've got two for below and one center top. <clears throat> so here is the one at center top. Actually, a friend of mine literally whipped this up in camp using a handheld jigsaw um, in 2009. He just whipped this up. Um, I was super impressed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are the supports that are going to keep it in place. And we will hold them in place. I saw, there they are, over there. The, the wedges, wooden, yeah. wooden wedges, yeah. I will return this to the neighbors and then I'll grab the wooden wedges. Excellent. And uh, thank them profusely on my Absolutely. behalf. Absolutely. Okay, we have some really nice neighbors. Very, very helpful, very friendly. Uh, really enjoying our new our new spot this year. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set this up. Slide, slide, slap this end on. And probably at some point I should, I don't know, apply some varnish to this or some kind of oil finish. But the reality is I use this exactly once a year and I don't live where the things are stored. So, you know, by the time I think about it, I'm literally at Penzik using it. And that's definitely not the time to be varnishing things is when you want to use them immediately. Okay. So we just then take, thank you, we then take the, just imagine if this were horizontal, how easy it would be to see all of this without me moving my camera around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny that. So just put these wedges in place. And then, like magic, it becomes a unit. And then almost instantly, I have a place to put my crap. <laughs> and the bed generally has to actually kind of poke through the tent a little bit. And yes, that can lead to some moisture seepage, but it's generally okay. Yeah, I do. I love, I love trestle furniture in general. Because I definitely have the medieval mindset of, 
I like my space to be able to be cleared for other for other activities than just um, Okay, and then we just put the tabletop on. I'm going to figure out where the table... I have a funny feeling that the tabletop didn't make it, that I'm going to have to ask for that to be brought up by people who are following on. In the meantime, you can use one of my spare boards. Yeah. Sort of. Well, no, they're, I, think the, I think the one of them might fit between those. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, Yeah, so service. this is the problem when someone else packs your things for you. They don't necessarily know everything that needs to come. Uh, so, Eleanor, if we could have, make a mental note that I need to ask Lord Papa, Lord Master Papa, to bring the tabletop with him when he comes back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, normally, a top would go on this and then it would instantly become usable for storage. I think I think Lady Eleanor, my soon-to-be apprentice and current lady-in-waiting, might have a board we can just put straight on top, and then it will at least be have some storage space. Um, but this is where I keep, for those of you who've seen my set-up pavilion tour, oh, look at that perfect, a board. Like I said, it's a very narrow board, but in lieu of... It will be useful for keeping my toiletry kit until Thursday when the tabletop arrives. <laughs> because that's when it might, when it would be able to come back. Okay, well, I think that's all the setting up we're going to do for now, because it doesn't make any sense for me to uh, set up the canopy until the bed's actually kind of made. Okay, well, are there any questions? Um, oh, yeah, I desperately, I desperately want a scribal desk. That is on my list of things to get. Yeah, a nice, a nice 15th century style scribal desk. Are there any questions before we part ways for now? And we're going to go get some straw and get some lunch and go buy some more food to eat on future lunches and then the setup will continue this this afternoon evening and I might I might live stream the hanging of the canopy so you all can see just all the odd positions I have to take to do that okay so otherwise any questions anyone if you are watching this in a retrospect, then, you know, um, like as a recording, just drop your questions in the comments and I will, of course, address them as always. Um, and uh, just a quick reminder, today's video was sponsored by Armour & Castings. If you have need of any reproduction, medieval jewelry, belts, fittings, things made of metal and cast, they are fantastic. Their prices are super reasonable. They're Ukrainian and they're keeping up production even in the middle of a war. So that's super impressive. And they're really nice people to boot. Um, so everyone, otherwise, stay creative and hopefully I'll see you later at a later live stream. Bye everyone. And now I'm going to try to end it. <laughs> Is there a way to keep the comments?